This is a short tutorial that will teach you how to create a clear, clean bar chart and then how to add a benchmark line to show how well the data meets a set goal. A bar chart, also known as a column chart, or wrongly a histogram, is a way to show quantitative data for different categories. The length of the bars, either horizontally or vertically, visually display the value for each category. It's a very common chart and one that you've likely seen, read, or created many times over. Let's look at how we make a bar chart in Microsoft Excel using some of the tips for better charts that were covered in this separate tutorial in this series. Here we have data for 25 fictional studies that were submitted to a Fictional Institutional Review Board, or an IRB. Each study is identified here in column A and the actual number of days that it took from the time the study was fully submitted to when the submitter received a decision from the IRB is shown here in column B. At the bottom of column B, I've calculated the average turnaround time for this group of studies, 36 days. We can make a bar chart to visualize this data simply by selecting it all, choosing insert, a clustered column, and this is what we'll get. Now, remembering some of those tips from the tutorial on how to make better charts and graphs, let's see if we can't make this a bit better. The first thing I want to do is remove this uh, axis down here on the horizontal line. We don't really need it for what we're trying to say. We can also remove the grid lines to get rid of some of that clutter, make it clearer. And we're also going to label our bars directly so we don't really particularly need a vertical axis. I'm going to move the title out of the way. And now let's look at these bars. What can we do to make them stand out a bit more? A couple of things. If you select them and then right click, you'll get this drop down menu and we can format this data series. And this window will open on the side. And the one thing we can do is give them a bit of, of heft, bulk them up a bit. And you do that by minimizing your gap width. In this case, I'm going to go down to, let's say, like 55. Helps you to see them better on a screen. Also, when they're selected, you can change their color by going to the paint bucket. I'll make them black stand out again a bit more. Now, while they're also selected, I want to add those data labels back so that the reader can see and really tell exactly what these bars represent. I'm going to right click on them. I'm going to add the data labels and there they appear. One thing you might note about the default settings for Excel is that the font color is not a true black. It's a it's really a dark gray. So if you want to change that, you would go to the home panel and here under the font color, you can see it's this middle gray. I'm going to turn it to solid black. I think it's a little easier to read. I'm going to do the same for the title while I'm in it. I also want to make these perhaps just a bit bigger font size. So I'll make them 12 points. Now they're going to stand out pretty well. So let's go back to the title. What exactly is the story that this data is telling us? Well, it seems to me that it's just saying that there's not a whole lot of consistency between this group of studies or within this group of studies in terms of the turnaround time for, let's say that was a month. So let's just say that's what it is. And we're going to put that right clear here in the title so that the audience can understand right away what we're saying or what this data is saying. We'll say that the IRB turnaround time for studies, we'll call this a month, submitted last month, lacks consistency. <laughs> but we do know the mean turnaround time is 36 days, so we can add that there. We don't have to necessarily show that calculation. We did it ourselves and we can put it in the title. Another thing about the text box 
within this default is it doesn't left justify well. So sometimes you have to just do a few things. This one worked out pretty well to just get them to line up a little bit better. So there we have it. That's our, that's our chart for this group of data showing that we don't have a lot of consistency when it comes to turnaround time for uh, studies in this particular month. Now, suppose we have a goal for our turnaround time, something to help the IRB measure how well they're doing compared to perhaps other IRBs for similar size universities or institutions. For this example, let's say that our goal is 30 days. The first thing that we need is a data point for our benchmark. Here, we add this to our set by creating a third column labeled benchmark. The benchmark for every study is 30 days, and so I've added that for each one going down. You can add a benchmark to your chart in a couple of different ways. The first and the easiest can be done if you have a newer version of Microsoft Excel, in which case you would grab all of the data, choose to insert a chart again, but this time we're going to choose a combo, and we're going to choose a combo chart with the line, the clustered column with a line. And that automatically creates your benchmark. Let's reinforce some of those steps for good charts. We're going to declutter, getting rid of those grid lines. We don't need this axis. We don't need this legend. We don't need this axis because we're going to label directly. Move my title out of the way. I'm going to change the color of this to black. I'm going to go here to the gap width and I'm going to reduce that to 55. While I have them highlighted, I'm going to right click. I'm going to add the data labels. I want to make them a true black, so I'm going to go back to the home and the font selection turn them black, give them a bit of bigger size, make them 12 point. I'm going to make the chart title black too while I have it. Now, one other thing I want to do is I want to extend this benchmark line all the way across the chart. It's You can see it stops halfway in between both of these last bars, the first and last bar. And we can extend it simply by fooling it just a little bit. You can see it's grabbing up to here. What I can do when you look at the whole section of data that's being chart, charted, if I add an extra row at the top and I give it one more data point and I do the same at the bottom, now when I highlight the chart, I just want to extend what's being charted up to capture that benchmark and to capture this benchmark. And then you'll see it extends beyond the links, the other bars that are there. The one other thing I might do is I might bring this particular label out front because it is sitting right on the line. So I would perhaps just give it a background fill. It doesn't have a fill now. Probably give it a background fill of white and then it'll stand out. It breaks the line, but it's not too disruptive in terms of um, telling the story and really you want to be able to see that data point. So what is the story that this data is telling us? Well, it looks like it's telling us that our current IRB turnaround time um, from submission to decision is a little bit above our goal of 25 days or 30 days. So let's add that in as our title. And I want to use the color again, as we did in that tips, use color wisely. Our goal is 30 days, and this benchmark is showing us 30 days. So we can use color and match those up, making the font color for that, the orange, like the benchmark line, and it visually ties them together and helps get the story across.
Now, if you don't have the option in your choice of charts, that combo chart, you can still pretty easily make this chart. This time, all you need to do, and I'm gonna pull this out of the way so we can see, I'm going to um, eliminate this. Again, pretend we didn't do that step yet. And I'm gonna grab all of the data, and instead of inserting this combo chart. This time I'm gonna use the clustered bar just like we did in the first time. And you'll see that's exactly what it gives us. The two data points clustered together, two sets of data points. And now what I wanna do is turn this, um, this set of data points, all the orange bars, I wanna turn that into the benchmark. So if I right click on it, or if I click on it and then right click on it and I change the chart type, it's currently a column. If I change it to be a line, just like this, it immediately becomes your benchmark line. You would do the same to extend it. You would just look at this chart. You'd add a row up here. You'd add another data point to stretch the line out. Then when you go in here, you're just gonna grab it, grab the bottom, and it'll extend your line, just like in the last time. You could clean this all up, just as we did in the chart below here, and you'd end up with the exact same chart, just made a separate way. So this is the chart that tells the story that the IRB has some work to do to improve the turnaround time on study decisions. Perhaps they need to add more staff, maybe convene more meetings. Maybe they need to review the steps of the process more closely so they could show the points where the slowdown occurs. Whatever the outcome, the visualization gives the team a clear snapshot of how they're measuring up to their goal. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. It's part of a series on data visualization prepared by librarians in the Research and Scholarly Communication Services Department of the Lamar Souter Library, University of Massachusetts Medical School. Please check out the other tutorials in this series, available now and always growing in number, to learn how to make better charts and graphs in your work. Thank you.